Now in part three of how to make great lessons using Smart Notebook, I'm going to show you how I integrate the lessons using my textbook on a PDF with the Smart Notebook tools. First, I'll show you the textbook page here on the right and the resulting activity here on the left. As you can see, this one relates to this. The next one is connected with this and this one connects with this. There are 11 sections that I'm going to show you. So I'll put the links in the comment section below so you can jump to your preferred detailed activity of instruction. So now I'm just going to give you a quick preview of the 11 activities. First, there is the anagram shown here. Then I'm going to use category sort image, then category sort text, the image match, the image selection, the pairs. Then I'm going to use the sentence arranger, the tiles, which hide and reveal pictures behind them. Then word biz and finally word guess. I will also show you how I use random group generator in order to generate my students into various groups that I don't choose, but the generator chooses. Also, there is the random word chooser, which helps to choose which person should come to the board and leaves all the decisions out of my hands. A great tool to use. And finally, there is the text splitter, which we will use throughout some of the instructions. So let's begin. First, we're going to focus on anagram. And here I've already made an anagram of these animals. So we simply have to press start. And as you can see, the word turtle appears. So I will just quickly move over the letters and it generates a score for you. You may have noticed that the actual timer was going really fast and the reason for this I'm not sure but in order to cure it you simply have to go on the edit button now I've already changed it to slow and it still went fast, but somehow just by clicking on the edit button and clicking OK again, it goes a lot slower. Why it does this, I don't know. It could be a glitch, but just remember that when you go to the next anagram maker, that you press edit before you press start, because as you'll see, it's going really fast, but when I click Edit, OK, it goes nice and slowly. And this is the second team. So I have two teams here, Team 1, Team 2. You can have up to as many different teams as you like. There are, however, just to make note here, there are six colors. There is blue, brown, green, orange, purple and teal and you'll find them under the anagram. So you can do six different colors if you wish. So let's go back to our anagram maker and as you can see I was able to put the words in and the pictures. How did I do this? Well, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to start with a new notebook and I'm going to do exactly what I've done here. Here I go, I'm opening up the smart notebook. Okay, here's the smart notebook open. You may have noticed that my in image here 
is constantly on the top and even if I click on other objects this remains on the top and you may be wondering how that is now there's a tool I'm using called the auto hotkey script as you can see there and if you'd like to know how to get it and how to use it I have a small video on it I just copied that if you go to my YouTube channel and I'll provide the link below now it's quite a long video 39 minutes but you only need to go to a short section which if you scroll down and click show more it says here auto hotkey and as you can see it's just a short six minute video on how to use it so what you'd have to do is just simply click on the text here and it will jump to we move how to use the, PDF the auto hotkey I want using this okay so let's get back to our activity so my page is constantly on the top which is useful or you can have them side by side and I'm going to go to the anagram maker so the lesson toolkit activities again click the plus sign and you can see anagram click the plus sign here I'm simply going to use a blue one so if you find it's too large for your screen you may have to change the size accordingly okay so for us I'll just make it small so we can see the pictures and I'm just going to show you how I put in the words and the pictures in a very quick way so we click on edit I've got my pictures here I'm going to zoom in to the turtle and if you're on a Windows you can simply hold down the Windows key the shift and an S and you get a box where you can make a little picture here now that's saved to the clipboard so if I go back to here you can see it's put a picture there and I simply drag the picture making sure my X is over the square and it drops in and the same Windows shift S I do another one get the shark in click back on here control V and then drag it into there in order to get the words on you could simply write the word turtle or if you're feeling a bit lazy you can find a page where the names of the animals are and simply use the select tool where is shark there it is just to double click on shark and then move away and you'll see there's a black arrow I simply drag it over here and it falls in and I can do this for all the other ones crocodile look how quickly it is double click drag in swordfish now that one didn't go it pasted here but what you can do is just drag it into it until it goes yellow and then it falls in so again we've got seagull make sure it goes yellow and it's there and then you can go back and get your pictures so I've got my uh, animals here my seagull shift windows s and simply place it in here actually that's the wrong one 
but you can remove the pictures here. It says remove images, so I made a mistake. I'll just remove the images and I'll have to do it all over again. Okay, so that's how we make the anagram. Don't forget to change the fast to the slow, which will be a lot more fun. And there you can see it's gone slow. Also, if you do happen to use the pictures as clues, I'll put this picture back. Then when you press it, the students can press clue and then see what the picture is and then start. Okay, and the nice thing about this game is is that when you do the activity, it actually adds up the scores. So you don't even have to check on who's doing it the best. So if we click the next one. Shark. You can see the scores are totaling up. And it's great because then you can have two or three groups vying against each other, which is really good. Okay, so we've now shown anagrams. So we can tick that off. So I'll just tick that off. Tick. Anagrams have been done. Now we're going to look at category sort image. With category sort image, you can put the images into whichever area you think they belong. So the students come up and say, well, uncountable is lemons, pancakes. So I'll just do them randomly without thinking so much. And what you can do is just check. Check if they're in the correct. Oh, so only one is correct. So you can reset. And you have a solve button where you can solve the answers. So we can reset or you can actually click check and let them drag it and decide where to let go. So if they let go here, yay, correct. If they let go here, no. So they're going to have to drag it over and do it there. And as you can see in the editing section, you just simply drag in the pictures as I did for the previous activity. But I'm going to do it just in case you've jumped to this one, ignoring previous activities. So let's go over to the new smart notebook file we've been making. Now I need to make a new page. So you simply click here, add a page and I have a new page. Then I'm going to go to the activities again. Remember it's under lesson activity toolbook and go to category saw image. And here I'm going to drag in the brown this time. And we're going to do the same thing. When we edit, we need to drag the pictures. How many do you want is up to you. You can have three columns. So you have three columns or you can just have the two. So let's see what we were trying to do. We were trying to make the words countable. There are and uncountable. There is because obviously the students will say there is some sugar. There are some tomatoes. So our labels are countable and uncountable. So here we just simply write countable, uncountable. And you can see I have a choice in the drop down now. So what I need to do is again, zoom on the pictures and I can use the windows shift and S 
in order to copy and do that. Control V, paste and drag the image there. There is another way to copy from here and you can actually use uh, a tool which is a camera tool. So I have other videos about doing this kind of activity and you can take a snapshot and this will just take a snapshot of this and then when I click on here control V it will paste it there but you can decide obviously Windows shift S seems the quickest but if you only have a mouse then maybe the camera snapshot might be quicker so I'm going back to the hand tool and as you can see I already have two items to judge let's see what did I do with them I put countable well butter there is some butter so butter is uncountable and milk is uncountable so this way if I put it here and check you can see it's wrong but here it's correct okay and I don't need to show you the rest you can simply copy organize them and that is the second one done so now we have done category image sort okay in the next activity we're going to look at category sort text this is where we're going to sort the text not into pictures but into categories so here you can see one I've already done and you can see in the edit I've written the words or copy and pasted them and chosen the right activity once again we can press solve we can reset and we can check and we can move them into the right activity or we can click off check and let them do it and see what the result is later and check so let's start with a fresh page and once again we need a new page go to the category sort text click on the brown category and simply add in your desired columns so we want three columns oh no we just want two there's only chores so two columns and we can decide where to put the text once again I'll use the select tool just to, to select the words and it turns into a little arrow and I can drag into the yellow it's a lot quicker so wash up so I've done a free a few there make the bed is column one is chore column two is free time and making the bed is a chore reading a comic is a free time washing up is a chore so if I click you can see you have the choices read a comic free time make the bed wash up check and they're done and don't forget when you do this to press the save button you can save it to your computer and then take that file to your school and put it on the computer there so let's have a look at the next activity we can cross this one off and now we're going to go to image match 
On this page, you can see I have five images and here five images. Unfortunately, you can only have five images in this one. So if you have more, you're better off using the other tools. This is a very simple one again. You drag the picture, you drag the word in, and you can add the solve button. So I can say solve, and they jump, reset, and check. So I can put check and see if it checks with the right one. And you can see how that happened. Let's make that page now. So we need a new page once again. Go to our image match and drag in an image matcher. We're going to click on edit and we want, let's say we want, well, for this, we want the five images as there are five. So let's zoom into those images. And again, I'm going to do Windows, Shift and S to copy and paste. I'll drag that image there. Shift, Control, S. You can see how it doesn't take any time at all when you want to make an activity that could be quite enjoying for the kids. There's the fish. And the final one. And that's that. And you can, if we had the text available, maybe in the teacher's book, we could actually just copy and paste the words instead of writing it. So here we may have to write it unless I can find the text. So I'll just type it in and you'll see that in a few seconds. So let's just highlight the text backspace and put the coral. Oh, it's the coast. Coast. Now I'll just pause while I write in the rest. And there you have it. I've typed in the rest. I don't know what the password is for. I guess it's in case somebody edits your image and you don't want them to. I'm going to press OK. And you can see I have a solve button. I have a reset button and a check button just to see if the items are correct. So let's go back to our main page and we can tick off yet another one called image match. Now we're going to go to image select and in this one As you can see, the images are jumping and jumping and the student just presses the board and it stops. And they have to decide, is it a seagull, a pelican or a jellyfish? And obviously it's a pelican and then it flashes. Another student comes to the board, they click on it and he says, it's a shark. No. Now another student can come up and click octopus and it jumps again, etc, etc. If we go into the edit, you can see, once again, it's a simple matter of pasting in the pictures, writing the words, and if you wish to, you can do some handwriting, but we'll do label select. If we did handwriting, I think the labels would disappear, and I don't want that. So we have 10 images, you can have up to 18 images, wow. So that's quite a good game and could last a long time. Remember also, you can always, if you don't want them to see 
these words at the bottom. What I usually do is I just get a notepad and I simply just uh, put that over the boxes and what I do is I use that auto hotkey where if I press control space it actually stays on the top so if I need the answer I can say penguin and then I can lift it up hide it again and we can do this penguin penguin and then what is it and they have to decide if it's an octopus or not and then if it, they say yes you can go down and click the octopus and then you can hide it again so this is with the auto key the auto hot key I've shown you that in an earlier lesson so I'm gonna delete that so let's go to our page again. We're going to click a new page. We're going to go to the image selector. Again, we'll click orange this time. Press edit to begin. And there we need to simply put in as many images as we want. Let's just use three. And we'll do label. So if we put handwriting, I'm not sure anything will be here, but we'll do label select. And in fact, let's do handwriting, see what happens. So we've got the pages. Let's put in the pictures. And that's my turtle. And then that's my shark. And that's my seahorse. So, obviously, I imagine if I just click OK, it'll work. And you have to write your answer here. But I haven't written anything, so that's not going to work. So let's go here and write turtle. turtle shark and sea horse. Anyway, you're much better off with just the label select. As you can see, you get a choice and that's a turtle. Much easier. Okay, so let's go back to our main page and now we can tick off that we have done image select. The next one we're going to use is pairs. I love pairs. It's a great game where the children have to mirror the pictures with the words. So here's an example of pairs. And if I look in the edit, I put the picture of the turtle with the turtle. Notice that one has to go with one, two has to go with two, etc. So I click seven, that's a penguin, jellyfish, no. And then the students have to remember where that was. Octopus, is that an octopus? No, that was a penguin. Let's see if we can find two that are similar. Penguin, there we go. And then that disappears. And then the next person can do another one. Oh, that was lucky. Okay, so that's how we do that. So let's go to our new page and make our pairs. Select add a page. Go to our pairs tool and we'll drag in a purple pairs so for this one I'm just going to use 
four. You can have up to 12 pairs. That's a lot of pairs. So I'll just say uh, four pairs, okay? And again, it's a simple matter of control, S and Windows, which copies and pastes. Paste it in. Here, you may have to write the word turtle, because that other pasting mechanism I used doesn't actually work on this. So, let's get our shark in. Control V, paste it, drag it in, and write the word shark. Let's go on to something easier to write. A whale. Drag that in. Type the word whale. And pelican. Let's do pelican. Remember to click on the purple and then control V, paste and drag. Then the word pelican and show the tile numbers, which is handy so they can remember the number. So whale, shark. Then the next person comes up, turtle, pelican. The next person comes up, turtle, turtle, shark, pelican, shark, shark, yay. Then the next one, whale, whale, and obviously the next one, pelican. So, and then you can reset, and it actually goes in a different place this time. So the whale is no longer there, it's the shark. So that's what's good about this game, is you can actually play it again and again. So let's tick off that activity. So now we have done pairs. Next we're going to do sentence arranger. Now the sentence arranger is what it says. If you have a text that is ordered that the people have to listen to and it has to be in an order, this is the order I want it in. That's the order of the story. You simply write it in, click OK, and if we press check now, you can see one of them is actually in the right order. So we could move some of them up and then the others jump down. Move them around, move them around. How did I do? Nope, I still only got one right. But I can press solve and then this will move them all into the right place, which is great. So you can reset or you can press check and simply move them and say, oh, is this number one? Yes, it is. That's number two. So maybe the baby was three. And if these two are wrong, they're obviously in the wrong order. And so that's quite simple. Uh, you simply have to go on to your new page, select the sentence arranger, and again decide which colour you want and you can write in your sentences. As you write one, another one comes free. So that's how that works. I don't think I really need to go into much detail about that. Once again you can drag the sentences in. I will show this in a bit more depth when I'm doing an activity from a book in part four. Okay, so Let's go for a new page because we'll be doing something else now. So sentence arranger has been completed. Now the tiles. The tiles is a really good way to hide a picture and have the children come up and remove one or two tiles and then guess the picture. 
here is one of the animals as you can see if I click on a tile you can ask the children okay you can only click two tiles and then the next team clicks so I click one two and they say oh it's a snake and they win and they can click the other tiles if you click the tiles again they hide it you simply to edit you simply decide how many tiles you want you can have a fewer tiles or more tiles you click the text if there's going to be text but I don't do that you just put the object so drag the object over the tile so here's my object so I make sure it's over the tiles and I'm not sure if I can make the object stretch oh yeah I can so if you want you can you might notice that while the object does move in the same kind of ratio you can actually if you hold down and drag it forcibly drag it up you can actually end up making the image strange so I can actually fit it exactly to the size of that page which is great so I click OK and this time it is actually filling the whole page which is great so that's how to do that activity to do it you simply need to go to a new page again which we're on go to the tiles and you can see you have a number of different colors so let's drag that over and at the moment we only have four tiles so I'm going to edit I'm going to put in an object and that object might be this penguin so I control S copy paste and I can just simply drag once again I can make it that big and I click OK now you may have noticed drag the objects and send them to the back so what that means is you click on this icon and there's an arrow here which you need to click on and order to send it to the back or send it just backwards one place but we're going to send it to the back and you can see the lines are on top now now when we click OK we have our picture in the background reset so that's another one we can tick off which is the image select let's go to a new page and this time we have done the tiles so we've completed the tiles and the final two we're going to do is the word biz and the word guess so let's have a look at that again like most of the games you can have two of these instead of just one you know in order to make teams there are six different colors so if I look at the edit I've written the word in Spanish and the answers in English and you can make up to eight questions but remember that's eight questions per team so that could be a long game and I simply made it easy so if you make it difficult there are going to be more squares so when you press start there's more letters which could confuse them whereas if you make it easy then as you can see there are not so many squares and they can probably find the word easier and the idea is they have to write the word floor find the O 
oh it's flat sorry flat and then they score and then you've got the next word and they have to write stairs if they write the wrong letter then it goes back to the beginning so their spelling is really really important they do the right letter the children were really shouting a lot because I did allow them to shout out the letters in order to help their friends so we can reset and you can edit simply write in the letters and that's that for now so if we go to our new page again go down to the word biz and click one of these and you simply write in your word you know, so the answer is flat and I've only got one so I'll click OK so start and it's flat And that's it. And it also gives you the final score. So if you do three or four, it will total up all the scores and you can see who is the winner, which is great because it's, it means the teacher has less responsibility in writing on the board for the scores. So that's another one we can tick off the word biz. And finally the word guess. In this one, let's have a look at what the words are. Okay, they're to do with the animals. You write in, you can write clues, but you don't have to. And we have a choice of soccer, basketball, or tomato. The soccer one is popular. Let's see what the letters are. Oh, I missed. Normally there would be sound with this. Let's see if there's a sound. So that's a goal. Normally there's a sound. Uh, maybe it's because I'm recording. There's no sound. Um, now, if you don't know a letter, you can always buy a letter. But then you end up with a miss. So I reckon this is going to be seagull. Well done, seagull. And you can say that goals for and goals against. So this team has got minus one. We can go to edit and we can choose the basketball, which is quite fun. By a letter, let's choose I. I scored, yay. Oh, I missed, it bounces off. So that looks quite fun. Or you can use the tomato splat. So let's go, oh, I hit him, yay, hit him in the face. E, another hit. A, another hit. Wow, I'm really good. Ah, oh, another hit. Oh, I missed. And look, he's smiling because I missed. Q, another miss. P, another miss. Ah, hit. C, ah, it's going to be seahorse. So, finally, a hit. Well done. I've got six minus four, so I've got two points. Okay. So, again, simply make a new page. Here we have a new page. We go to this section, Lesson Activity Tools, and go on to Word Guess. And again, you can drag on whatever color you want, and then you can edit the words. And that's pretty much easy to do. So, We've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten activities so far. Now there are some bonus information here about the random group generator. So I'm just going to open up my workspace. So we've clicked on a new page and we just need to go to the we don't need this activities. We need to go to the tools below and 
As you go down, you can see there is the random group. No, that's the random group picker image. We want the text picker in order to make a group of names. So here's we've got the group. As you write in the name, another name appears. And you can have, you can decide what those names are. I'll show you my final one. Here are my students. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten students. So I could generate them in pairs. Or I could regroup them if I don't like that group. I can go back and I can put them into two groups. And again, if I don't like the group, I can regroup. So that's a really great find. And another one we can use is the name picker. So if we go back, have a new page, go to our tools, and pick the random word chooser. This helps us determine which student should come to the board. So let's say I have three students, uh, Bob, Ian, and Fred, and then I just select. And it just selects Ian. Now, if I don't want it to choose Ian again, I should click on the no repeat. So it chooses Fred, next, Ian, and finally, Bob. And I have a bigger example here, which is handy. And so Mario's the first to the board. But I must remember to put on the no repeat. Otherwise, they may be repeated. So, we can tick off that exercise too. This one and this one. The final one is the text splitter. And that I will use a lot more in the next part four, where I show you how I use normal PDF tools, normal PDF books that I have, and I take the information out of there to make not so much interactive, but more active based learning activities. And that's in part four. So hope you've enjoyed this part, but just let me quickly show you this planner and you can find it here in the tools. In the activity tools kit in the tools and you'll find it at the bottom this is just in case you have a large amount of text that needs splitting so for instance let's say this is the text i wrote split the words however it does tend to flush them to the right hand side so you kind of have to drag them out yourself so this is a great easy way to split text so you can manipulate them separately. So see you in part four.